Okay, welcome back to another video, folks. I know I always say it, but thanks very much for tuning in. It's always massively appreciated, right? It's absolutely giving me something to do and a bit of focus during the times. I know some of you watching won't be in lockdown anymore, but here in Wales, we are still, um, you know, we're allowed out for exercise and stuff, but we can't go driving off uh, here, there and everywhere, and we're still not really supposed to go climbing, and well, I haven't been. Uh, sadly, as much as I'm itching to get out, I've been just going up into the attic and training up there and making do with my daily dog walks with the boy. Um, but yeah, they, they've kept me active. Today's video is five ways for you to improve your outdoor photography, right? And I've been pretty hesitant to do this video. I've said before that I'm a big believer in only doing videos uh, on subjects that you kind of know about. There's enough videos from people who just utter rubbish uh, out there already, let alone with me adding to them. But I think I know enough to do a little bit of justice to the video. And the other reason I've been hesitant to do it is there's already so much good stuff out there on YouTube and the internet in general from like proper professional photographers who are exceedingly good at what they do. That isn't me. I enjoy photography, but I am an amateur at it, for sure I am. When I'm out and about climbing, hill walking, whether that's for pleasure or for work, the photography is a secondary thing for me. First and foremost is about that climbing or whatever I'm doing. It doesn't mean I don't really enjoy the photography, but it's not the main event, right? Those videos that are already out there from your know, Peter McKinnons and various other people, they're the ones you want to watch, but I'll come on to that in a minute, okay? But I think, I've, like I say, I think I've got enough to add something to it. And, you know, just my take on it from a work point of view as well. It's not just for the pleasure side of taking a nice photo. It's how you can make those photos kind of work for you, because that's really flipping important in the modern world of social media and, and trying to get work in a very competitive marketplace, right? So without further ado, how can you get better photos for work or for pleasure? Uh, point number one, composition and lighting, right? I'm not gonna go into much detail of these, but you need your photo to be well lit, whether that means uh, you know uh, lots of light coming in or just dramatic lighting, lighting that adds to the, the picture, really. The other part of it, the first part was the composition. So if you don't know about like the rule of thirds, for example, go and have a look at that. That just gives you a base to work from. Any rule in photography, in uh, same as in any walk of life, they're sort of made to be broken every now and then, but it gives you a bit of structure to it. So when you, you're looking at a really good photo, try and analyse it, look at it and think, why does that lighting work to make that a good shot? Why is the composition good? You know, is the person's face in the right place if it's of a climber and has it got that nice blurry background depth of field, bokeh. You can watch whole videos on how to pronounce bokeh, even the Japanese, which is a Japanese word, they can't agree on quite how to say it, so we've got no chance. But yeah, think, think about that. Think what you like in a photo and why that stood out, right? And then analyse it with those two thoughts in mind. And that might just give you some structure to when you're out taking that photo, okay? Point number two, is the subject itself. What's going on in that subject? Is it interesting? Climbing, we're really lucky with climbing because there's, you know, if you're in the right position to get that good composition, to get that nice lighting, you know, when you're looking down on a climber, for example, and you can see their eyes and they're gripped and they're, they're pulling some nice move, you get that all the time in climbing. So we're, we're really lucky. When you're out in the hills, hill walking, it's the same. Look at the, the magical places it takes us to, the landscapes and everything that's going on, the subject, uh, that's kind of the easy part, but it's kind of getting the subject at the right time and stuff, isn't it? So I was looking at a website of someone the other day and their homepage, the initial picture on it is someone looking grumpier than my mate Mike when Macca's is closed, you know, like, you don't want to see that, do you? I'm going to come on to sort of work stuff in a minute, but you want, it doesn't need to be smiling all the time. Your smiley pictures are great, aren't they? But, you know, maybe it's concentration, there's something dramatic happening, not just someone looking like proper grumpy. That's depressing all around, isn't it? Um, I, I get, I'll flash up a photo of when I think a grumpy photo can work, actually, though, because uh, like I say exceptions to every rule, right? Point number three is we, we kind of have to work with being opportunistic, don't we? I've said that I'm going out to go climbing or hill walking or mountaineering. So you have to be able to get that picture 
when the opportunity jumps out at you and that's not just when the person is concentrating and looking really flipping cool on a, on a move or something it's also when it's safe for you to do so right and that's again personal work isn't it we can't just let go of the breaking strand of the rope and take that photo and all that kind of stuff or you know it could be on a scramble we can't just suddenly get them to hang out on this really tricky exposed part while they're having a bit of a moment oh yeah just I'll oh, go back and move I'll oh, go back one more move get I'll oh, just lean forwards a bit it's not always appropriate is it so you've you've got to have whatever you're using to take the photo sort of handy and quick to use um, and just please 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 stay safe when you're doing it. it's one of the reasons I like using guide mode uh, in climbing because it's kind of very easy to keep a hand on that and use your other hand to take a photo when the opportunity jumps out so you do have to be opportunistic you know it's, it's extremely rare in a work sense that you can kind of compose any photo um, and like I say, because even in personal climbing, it's secondary. So yeah, climb with a mate. I might say, hang on there a bit more than if I'm working and you know I've got a client on a coaching course, for example, and they're getting pumped on this move. Well, I'm not going to ask them to hang out there for a minute, am, am I? Uh, with my mates, yeah, I might well do. Say, I'll oh, just hang there. I don't care if you're getting pumped. It's a great mm-hmm. shot. Just hold on there. Uh, it's a bit of a difference, isn't there? Uh, the fourth point was kit, right? So uh, my um, phone, I think it's in my pocket, uh, an iPhone 11. These things are insanely good. Uh, you know, whatever phone you've got might be good as well. I'm not a flipping phone expert. Back in the days when phones started to have cameras, they were pretty awful to be fair, okay? Um, they were nice for a quick snap to show a mate or something, but you couldn't use them for a website or anything like that. Or they just, uh, just looked bad compared to a proper camera. Uh, these days, when the lighting is good and everything, um, and you're sort of playing to the strengths of that camera, um, won't go into like sensor sizes and boring things like that. But yeah, when you're playing to the strengths of that camera, the photos can be just immense, right? So just because you haven't got a proper camera in inverted commas, doesn't mean you can't take some flipping ace photos, and I'll come on to that in a moment. But you've got to have it sort of handy, haven't you? Um, you might think about putting it in a case and having a little lanyard on it or something to clip it to something. I don't, and I've only ever lost one phone, and frankly, that was, that was due to wetness rather than dropping it, actually. Uh, but yeah, they can take some mega photos, but, and there is a big but, it's very hard to compete against a proper camera, all right? The camera I use, um, have used for quite some time, a couple of years now, is this Sony A6000. Uh, I really like it. It's you, It's not massive, Neither is it tiny, you know, the lens is on it. This is just a hood on the lens, so you can make it a bit smaller by having that. This is uh, sort of a 30 millimeter lens. The lens comes off so you can swap the lenses out for different lenses and you can get some that are smaller than this lens. Um, Sorry, I have to concentrate, otherwise I don't want to wreck it (laughs) when I'm not concentrating. Uh, Yeah, you can get lenses that are smaller than that. So if you get a nice small lens, just about pocket size, especially if you take the eyepiece off as well. It's just about pocket size. These cameras are not going to hold you back, right? Unless you're some pro photographer, you're not going to be able to blame the camera for a poor shot. Um, I like this because one, you can change the lenses. So you can use it as like a point and shoot with a zoom lens or whatever, or you can have the flexibility of adding your own different lenses and change them around a bit. And you can shoot on like full automatic where you point it, it focuses, you click, you're done, great. Or you can swap it onto full manual aperture priority, shutter priority. Um, so it really is a pretty flexible thing. And you're just getting better quality photos. The difference between using that proper camera and my iPhone is when I actually want to do something useful with it, like put it on my website or point five, start editing it, right? If you look at any really good photograph on Instagram or on Facebook, chances are it's been edited, right? And that's, you know, that that might be a little bit of a depressing take on things. Um, I'm not sure. There's, there's plenty of good photos out there that haven't been touched, but for the most part, they've had something done to them. You can virtually guarantee it. I don't mean like adding mountains into the background or adding a jet flying past, although, you know, they do exist. I just mean tweaking the colours and the brightness of shadows and highlights and things like that and thankfully that's really easy to do and you you don't have to spend any money on expensive apps or uh, you know um, programs for your computer either you can you can spend a lot of money but you don't have to 
apps I would download on your phone straight away if you haven't got them already, Snapseed. That is just an absolute gift of a free app made by Google. You can do so much on it from tweaking shadows and highlights uh, to doing HDR effect, to blurring out bits and pieces, to vignetting, to healing, to getting rid of that power line or something, whatever might be in the way. Uh, I'm only saying that because I took a photo the other day where I should have got rid of the power line. Uh, absolutely all sorts. It's got filters on it. It's got just tons of stuff. You can just have a play with it. It's flipping brilliant. It's all slider based, so you can go, right, and then have HDR effect, and you can slide it up to 50 or 100, whatever max is. That'll look awful. Temper your um, instincts to just slide all these things right up. You've got to have a little bit of moderation with them, right? We've all been guilty of sliding that slider too far. But yeah, download Snapseed for free, and just have a play with some photos and see if you can tweak them, see if you can blur the background, see if you can brighten up the shadows a bit, see if you can take down the highlights so the sky's not all blown out and stuff like that. For free, it's amazing. It's such a powerful little tool. There's two other apps I have on my phone. Lightroom, which is made by Adobe. There's a free version of it. I have it as part of a, a different package, so I do pay for it, and you get more features if you pay for it. It does a lot of what um, Snapseed does. It's just a little bit, in inverted commas, more professional to you. So I, I do prefer it for some things than, than Snapseed. Again, though, you can just download the free version and have a play with it. And the other one, right, that is, it's great for getting photos sort of good for Instagram and stuff like that. Right? And that's called Lens Distortions. Again, you can pay for it to get a few more features, but the free version is really flipping good as well has a um, a couple of uh, sort of layer filters you can put on but the main thing it's for is for sort of adding light hits and lens flares and stuff like that and you know you can even add rain to a photo and all, all sorts of things it's free to download it and have a play with it instagram is a funny beast because it's not necessarily the most pro photo that will get you that interaction and get people commenting and stuff so actually we don't want to over edit stuff and like I say we've all been guilty of doing that but just tweaking those photos a little bit can make them jump off the screen and get that person to double tap that like button to read what you've written on it and then maybe to give you that follow as well. On the computer right, I use Photoshop and Lightroom um, again they're paid for versions so you can do a lot more with them but if you want to do stuff on the computer then uh, there's lots of free apps for that as well. One I have used in the past is called Polar, P-O-L-A-R-R. -R. It's great actually for a free thing, really pretty powerful and you can do, it's basically like a, a sort of a version of Photoshop um, for free and it, it does work really well. The camera, if you're gonna buy one of these cameras, you can pick one of these up for less than 300 quid secondhand. That is a flipping bargain. You can shoot in RAW on these as well, all right, which is a, a file type, which gives you more information on the file, which means you can do more editing without losing quality and stuff. So that's a big deal, actually. If you are going to edit stuff and put them on your website and things like that, it's well worth getting a camera that can shoot in RAW. There's loads of other cameras out there, right? I, I'm not a camera expert. I know about what I use. Remember point three, was we've got to be opportunistic. So sometimes having that, on auto snap it's just going to get you a better photo than having to faff around doing adjustments and that so do bear that in mind but shooting in raw is, is a bit of a gift i just mentioned instagram and getting those double taps for likes and then getting those follows and people reading your message if you're just putting stuff up on instagram or facebook or tiktok or whatever and it's purely for personal stuff none of this really matters does it if you're doing it for work though this matters big time, right? Why does it matter big time? Because that's where people find out about you. That's where people click on your picture, then click on your profile, then go on your website, and then book that course. It is vital. We all know what it's like looking at a website. There's no one watching this who hasn't looked at a website and gone, oh my goodness, that front page is awful. Switched off straight away, find another one. Doesn't matter if that website has the best instructor in the world behind it. Sadly, they'll, they'll never get that booking, will they? I'm not saying that people won't book with them at all, but uh, you know, a lot of people will just switch off straight away and they go to that person with the nice, you know, good-looking website. And a lot of that does boil down to pictures, right? 
and that might be a, a sad state of affairs but I feel like that is the state of affairs social media is just so important I'm speaking about this from the viewpoint of that's how I grew my business I got um, you know on Facebook and, and Instagram years ago and, and grew my business that way the beauty of it is it's pretty much free isn't it other than your time so if you can be taking nice photos you're just jumping ahead of the game I reckon uh, compared to people who aren't taking nice photos and, and being active on it all so I could I could waffle on about you know what I think makes a nice photo what I think makes a nice looking website all these bits and pieces for for yonkies but I don't want to uh, bore you quite that much uh, my advice really is to take on that sort of maybe big picture stuff that I've been talking about and if you are interested in learning more about composition and lighting or editing go and search on YouTube for some videos about those specific things because I'm not going to do those videos because it's not my my area of expertise right so I mentioned the fella Peter McKinnon before type that name into YouTube and there is a lifetime's worth of videos and stuff on there about how to get good shots and how to stand out on Instagram and all these bits and pieces when you're taking these photos do think why you why are you taking them? Are you taking them for an Instagram shot? Are you taking them to print and put on your wall? Are you taking it just as a happy memory? That dictates kind of what shot you take and what edits you do to those photos. But I do think right that it's worth giving it some thought. Okay, like I said, that camera for less than three hundred quid second hand that might sound like a lot of money because it is a lot of money. Three hundred quid is three hundred quid. But imagine you've got this nice camera that's led you to give more thoughts of photography, which has led you to take nicer photos, which leads to maybe a couple of bookings. You know, what you charge for a day out is, is entirely up to you, but it wouldn't be unreasonable for, you know, an instructor be, to be charging somewhere but, you know, up from 125 quid, basically, for a day out. Um, a bit more for me, I'm afraid. So two days work from a nice photo or some nice photos you're up to 250 quid one more day's work and you've paid the cap paid for the camera and more haven't you so it utterly feels worth it to me i'm gonna stop waffling there because it's a, it's a subject i'm actually quite passionate about despite not being expert in it like i am on climbing i'm looking over at sling mountain there that's my that's my comfort area this takes me out of my comfort zone i have to work a bit harder with it all but i, I flip it love it i'm going to invite you to ask questions because i always do and i'm happy to answer them uh, and I always say as best I can so obviously me answering questions about photography is not going to be up to the level of me answering questions about climbing so bear that in mind but do ask away and I'll do I'll do my best for sure find us on Insta find us on Facebook you'll see some nice photos on there from me you'll see some right stinkers as well because I've taken my fair share of rubbish ones who hasn't right um, if you if you get into photography you'll take far more rubbish photos than you do good photos can you imagine back in the day I'm struggling but you know I, I grew up in a time of film camera when you had is it 24 or 35 photos you had to make them count because your parents weren't paying to have loads of rolls of film developed uh, these days we can take pretty much as many as we like can't we and that's not even starting on video stuff that's another video that I'm not going to touch on I hope you've enjoyed this load of waffle thanks very much for watching as always more videos coming up very soon yeah.